Well guys, here last week it's just been absolute chaos. I've been videoing a little bit on that ISX Cummins I've been in framing. Uh, I've been getting called out of the shop so much I haven't been able to stay on it as much as I would like to to get the guy going. And then of course, uh, so anyways, a little background. You'll find out later when I get the full video. I've been videoing on it, but every time I do something, I seem like I either run into a problem or I need something else or anyway. So, I thought the counterbar ledges were worn on it. So, what I did is, you know, I had the, I had the counterbar cutter and all that stuff. I got one of the K-Line uh, counterbar cutting tools. So, I got the, the, the kit in, put the new liner, in, uh, I put in a liner, so those liners come with a factory shim underneath them that you don't take off the liner, and then there's a, what they call a service shim, the 20,000 shim, so usually the way you do that is you'll figure out, you'll take a new liner, uh, put your service shim down there on your counterbar ledge, put your, your liner with your service shim on top of the or your factory shim on top of your service shim, put it in the bore with no O-ring, and then you'll clamp it down, and then you'll measure your protrusion. So say say you want 12 thousandths protrusion at your high side of your spec, so you get maximum crush on your head gasket. So let's just make it a good even number. So say with the service shim and the factory shim and the liner installed, clamp down you get 30 thousandths well obviously you need to take 18 thousandths off with your counterbore cutter that way you get 12 thousandths once you put it back in so uh, I put the new liner and the shim in there like I was just telling you and I clamped it down and the only thing is I was I was getting a good concentric reading all the way around I was getting I was getting I think 31 thousandths all the way around and I thought, well, hell, the high side of the spec on quick serve for this engine is 12 thousandths. So what the hell's going on here? So I pulled the liner back out and I took, I had a, a dial, uh, I had a, a dial depth uh, mic and I put the rods on it. And I, I, I wasn't really concerned about the measurement from there because that, that truck had never been uh, that engine had never been, the ledges had never been cut on it because there was no shims in there, right? So I wasn't really worried about the dimension. I was just worried about, I wanted to see if it was measuring the same all the way around. Well, I, I measured all the way around on that number three cylinder and I had within a thousandth exactly the same. So then I went over there because then I was like, well, what the hell's giving me this goofy measurement? Well, you know what? And I've never seen this before, but that factory shim on the old liners had worn thin on one side. The only thing I can think of is those liners must have been moving in there a little bit. I did notice on that head that it didn't seem like the head bolts were as tight as they should be, because usually I'll take a one inch gun and I can get about four or five bolts and I gotta wait for my air to build back up so I can get the rest. You know and keep doing that as i go along well this one here i i didn't have to do that on i just zipped them all out and they came out pretty easy and i thought that seemed like that wasn't very good to me um anyhow so anyways uh moral of the story here is i did my due diligence and i checked every single liner that way with the depth mic every ledge i should say and then i uh I went through and I put every liner in without the O-ring and then clamped it down and, and measured protrusion and I had 11 thousandths, pretty much a 10 to 11 all the way around on that thing. And you know, cutting counterbore, if you got a counterbore ledge that's off 1 thousandths, it's not worth going through all that trouble to gain 1 thousandths of an inch. That's just ridiculous, you know, but you got those guys out there. Oh, she barked, so now Duke decides he wants out because she barked. Hey. Wakey, wakey, eggs and bakey. Come on. You gonna do it? Let's do it. Uh. Anyway, so 
we got the damn thing uh all the liners pistons rods ma uh main bearings all that stuff has been installed somebody's been out here i'm gonna tell you about this thing in a little bit but this is just one of the many disasters that i've been trying to tackle at one time so anyway i get the i get the all the all the rods pistons everything set up get the liners in it uh get the block deck surface cleaned up i'm ready to put the head on i ordered a brand new cylinder head and from diesel cast west so i go over there and I look, I pull the invoice off, I look at it first. Yeah, I always make sure to see what I was billed for and all that stuff. And it says DOHC on it, dual overhead cam. Anyway, so I, I look at that and I open the box up and inside the box is a single overhead cam. So somebody had put a, the wrong, I left my freaking pocket knife up there on the valve cover last night. I was out here dark last night trying to get this thing running. Anyway, so we're dead in the water that was friday afternoon so of course i'm not going to see one till tuesday now so anyway dead in the water on that project i got a big john deere rear end out of a 644d loader i was tearing apart i didn't have a chance to video that because every freaking five minutes somebody was stopping by the shop wanting something as i was videoing and i just it was so chopped up i was like fuck it you know so um this morning i'm coming to this roadrunner hay squeeze this one should be familiar you guys a lot of you guys that have been viewers of this channel for a long time i've rebuilt this is one of the many of the 50 series engines i've rebuilt here years ago uh but what got happened here is these guys weren't thinking very much especially i can't believe some of these guys have been around here a long time and don't know better than this but you don't leave these hay squeezes out here like this especially when you got juniper tree line like that right there you're asking for it big time what happened is the pack rats got into it and i was out here yesterday he had chewed a bunch of wires up under the dash uh and the previous their mechanic had worked on it a bit trying to splice some stuff back together and he kind of got to where he's like shit i don't know man <laughs> i'm lost anyway i got out here yesterday and i'd found that i had no throttle i could get it started so I couldn't get I couldn't get it started from the very beginning because the Allison keypads would not power up. And if the Allison keypads won't power up, that means that the relay for the neutral safety won't power up either and latch. So it'll start. And so I finally had to hot wire that. We still got to figure out what's going on with that. That's this wire right here. And it says battery positive right here. And that's this wire. I stripped just a touch of insulation off which we'll fix and i just jumper wired it just to see what was going on and that powered everything up i got it started but then i didn't have any throttle and it took me quite a while to figure out what was going on i was, I was looking at this relay here okay this relay here they're using this relay to switch to signals is all they're doing and i that's another thing i had to fix i mean that that fucking rat chewed a bunch of shit up in this thing but what they're doing is they're all they're doing there's two throttle pedals on these so what they're doing with that relay is when you flip this highway there's a highway and a work switch right here when you flip that switch you're just you got three lines going to your throttle position sensors so you've got your uh, five volt reference your signal return and your signal so what they're doing with this they're switching the signals going back to the, the ecm for the throttle position so i finally got that figured out and got that fixed because it was broke down here or it wasn't broke they chewed the son of a bitch in two but I still wasn't getting any throttle, but then I didn't have any 5-volt reference either going to either throttle pedal. I finally got down here and I found the son of a bitch had got on this wire right here. Here it is right here, and he had chewed it off right flush on the connector. I mean, it's flush. So we brought our soldering gun here this morning. We're going to see if it's possible that we can get this plug. I'm going to have to unplug both of these and get it out here where I can work on it. And see if we can solder those together. I mean, this shit here, he had, th their mechanic did this, but look where he chewed on these and got all these right up on the connectors. No good. <laughs> this is another one they did. I didn't do that. I, I would have soldered all these. I would have just, I mean, that's the way to do these when they're done, done like that. 
because this kind of shit here is just a it's just a future problem is all that is it's just you're gonna have nothing but troubles with corrosion and then they come loose and you'll be going down the road and the son of a bitch will die and here's another one i found yesterday that the son of a gun had chewed up so we got quite a bit of work of wiring and fixing i mean he <laughs> he really destroyed stuff on this thing and then underneath the dash here we got some wires up underneath the dash that we've got to unplug and solder together and all that good stuff to try to get this thing fixed up so so the first thing we're gonna do is get the throttle position figured out i gotta get this unplugged and get it out here where i can work on it and see if we can get it fixed what is that i gotta got my shop this morning i didn't have my solder gun i don't usually carry it with me i just can't carry enough shit i mean that truck i have to usually what i have to do in some of the specialty tools i have to unpack them and take them back in the shop because i'm just out of room on it i need a i need a 14 foot box but uh anyways let me get this thing unplugged and see if we can get this thing figured out my hands I get to where my hands aren't as steady as they used to be and they're shaking and Should be pretty good. Now we can run our heat shrink up over the top of it. I should have got a little bit bigger chunk of heat. That, that might be a problem. I haven't used that soldering gun in quite a while, so I'm going to get my proficiency back to where it used to be. Soldering's like welding. I mean, you just gotta do enough of it to where you get good at it again. Damn it. I should have got a little bit bigger chunk of heat shrink on there than that. Kind of screwed up. I think I can get it over it. Alright, there we go. We got it over it. Okay, so now we've got to do the hard part. And the only way that I think I'm going to be able to do this is basically just got to get some solder built up on the end of the wire and then try to stick it to the other one, I guess. Can't really tie this one to that one, I don't think. This is going to be a tricky deal right here. Yeah. It's going to be a tricky deal, especially when this son of a bitch won't stay still. That's the problem I'm going to have, is this fucker does not want to stay still anywhere. Maybe right there I can get it to stay still, maybe. Well, it's not the prettiest thing in the world, but it is attached to it pretty good. So let's put that... Heat shrink as far as we can go down with it. Okay, so we got that part. That was a kind of a pain in the ass, actually. Let's plug the ECM back in. Now we'll just make sure. Yeah, these frickin' pack rats, man, they can destroy stuff. 
sure car's not fine down this road. It's gonna run over my freaking dog. Every time I hear one coming, I'm on the defense. Watch me try to put this split loom on here and knock my damn, rip my solder out. Trying to put the split loom back on the harness. That'll be the next thing that happens. Get in there. Oh, calm down, Joes. You sure got the thing. It's harness all twisted and kind of screwy the way they got it all together here. Putting everything in a bind and some of the way they do things at the factory. You sit there and you look at it and you go, know, what the fuck were they thinking when they did that? I'm going to leave that little, hopefully that'll stay connected. I pulled on her pretty good by hand, so I think it will. Okay. Well, make sure... There's one in the cab that I got to fix too that's on the throttle. That one's going to be a little bit of a challenge as well. Oh, come on, get pointing in that direction, camera. Okay. Well, let's see if we can get something to happen in the cab now. Now I should be able to, with that hot wired for now, I should be able to, now the batteries are going to be dead or something on it. Or I don't have a good connection. The batteries might be dead. I bet the, with that buzz, I bet the freaking batteries are dead on it. Yes, I am thinking the batteries are dead. I don't think my NOCO booster's got any voltage left in it. I jumped something off with it yesterday. So I'm probably gonna have to hook my truck to it. And... It's always something. Never ends. I got a little bit left in this thing. Let's put it on here and see what happens. Does that do anything for it? <sighs> yes. The... Why is my keypad not powering up? It should. <sighs> what the hell's going on here, huh? Oh, I got nothing here. What the hell's going on now? That's where I was sticking that wire yesterday. All of a sudden, I get. All of a sudden, I got no power on this blade on the fuse panel for some reason. I did yesterday. It's kind of odd. I heard that relay kick in right there. Yeah, there's my, there's my display is lit up. I don't know if that NOCO booster will start to say squeeze. I did. I know 
follow this this throttle pedal here. I still got to fix the five volt ref. No, yeah, the I think it's the signal wires broke up underneath. He chewed it up underneath the dash. So we need to go. See, watch this. See that switches where? Comes over here. We got throttle now. Let this thing run a while and make sure it charges up. Okay, finally got the dash out. I had to grind the heads off three of these. I could they're rounded out. I couldn't get a I tried chiseling them, I tried cutting a notch in them and hitting them with the impact driver and finally just geez, you know, I hate Allen heads. I just hate them. Anyways, you can see what I'm up against here. There it is. You gotta get I think they did that when they were trying to get it put on there with the butt connector. How good's this job here? It's, seems to be fairly good. Maybe I'll just crimp that one a little bit tighter and leave it alone. This one here goes right here. Yeah, not good. I'm gonna have to unbolt it from the firewall, pull it out here, see if I can do kind of the same thing I did on that other one. What's this other side here? See, he got up in here too, and those guys but connected a bunch of wires back in here. And this one. See anything here anywhere? I don't see anything. Let's see here. Here's our battery positive wire. It's a 136B. I kind of wonder where it goes because... I don't have any power on that wire, and that's what actually powers up all the relays, I think. That is this wire right here, which I believe is this one. And it's going up into this loom somewhere, and we got a wire here. Has it always been cut, or is that a new development, or what's going on with that? Was that just something when they manufactured this thing and they didn't need that? No, that wire, you can tell that wire was right there at one time. That would be that wire. But is that just to some light bulb? I mean, half the light bulbs have fell out of this poor old thing. Is that wire there go to what does that say on it where in the hell did it go where the fuck did that wire go kind of looking for this see somebody's butt connected this one here at one time but here's this battery positive wire right here 136 B does it tee off somewhere and go somewhere and have a hot power source. Just looking for anything that I can maybe see that maybe it does that. Here's another wire right here that's in two. What is that going to? That's going to the voltmeter. That's another wire that needs to be fixed. Why is there so many wires that are in two here? I mean, because that doesn't look like a rat chewed on that to me. That's just cut in two. Why is that cut in two like that? I don't know if that was... I don't know. I don't understand that. I mean, does that voltmeter work? Oh, shoot. I got the batteries unhooked. Yeah. See, I have no, this is, this. these things are manufactured, and I called those guys up there, and they don't even have the wiring schematic for this machine, because it's a 1995. So, I'm just shooting in the dark till I figure it out, pretty much. I'm looking for that red wire, maybe that it goes somewhere. I don't see it going off to any of these other posts anywhere. It pretty much looks like it goes down back through the 
the firewall somewhere and it goes back and gets powered up somewhere. I'm not sure, but we gotta fix this. I need to get this out of there. All right. Yeah, with all those wires that I see that are broken there are going to the light bulbs in the instrument cluster and I messaged them. I said, do you want me to spend the time and fix them or what do you want to do? And they said, nope, don't worry about those. Okay. Let's get the battery cables back on it. Let's see if we can start it again and see what's going on there. I'm just going to leave those kind of loose for now because I'm probably going to be pulling them back off. But... Let's see if we got a throttle on this side of the machine now when we switch. I'll have to jerry-rig my hot wire in here again. And that will be the next thing is figuring that out. Okay, so now I got throttle there. This one should not work. Now I can switch. Go back to this one. This one should not work. Now it should work. Okay. So, we're getting there. Okay. So I gotta put this dash panel back together, but I need... So the last two things... I've got to figure this out here, why this is not where this wire is going. Battery positive, and I don't see anything back there on the batteries to where maybe it's tying off to a battery post or anything like that. But this ground wire going to this relay panel for the Allison transmission, that's probably important. So I need to fix that one. That seems to be pretty important. And then, uh, what the hell, they got a jumper wire in there. <laughs> and I don't have any, I don't have any of those. It's going to be like a, what is that, 24, what? Does that say 24 volt? This is a 12 volt system. Why did they put 24 volt? Maxi, 24 volt, 30 amp. 30 amp. Why is this got 24 volt? This is a 12 volt system on this. That's very interesting. Okay. Um, I guess it'll probably work on a 12 volt. We used to take those old cat D9, uh, D69Us and uh, it was a 24, let's see here. Yeah, it was a, it was a 24 volt system, but we put a 12 volt alternator on, or starter on them, and a 24 volt system would spin that alternator twice as fast. I mean, it'd really spin them over. That's what we used to do to those. Okay, so same thing. I gotta unplug this connector here, and then strip this wire back, solder it together, put it back on. I was looking, this is 136B wire, and I look, this is 136C. What is this one here? This is 136A. So where in the hell's B at? I don't see any other red wires in the loom. How about over here? Nothing there, no red wires. I don't see any. I'm probably pulling this and break some more wires. These are all white wires that I can see here. There's a green one in there. I don't know where this red one, because this red one is going down the main harness here. And it must be going back here somewhere to the must be going back there somewhere to the battery or something I don't really get that I might have to just since I don't have a wire and harness schematic for it I might have to run it back to the battery and put an inline fuse in it or something to make this thing work or can I well that an easier way to do that is just 
find the hot side of the fuse panel here for the Allison one that's got battery power and just I guess just tie into it and it'll be fused there I guess I don't know what else to do without this fuse here's main power it says right here what's this fuse up here ignition on this fuse you would think that that battery power would be hmm with the key off let me get my power probe okay it's not so pretty but it's nice and solid uh, got another wire fix basically okay let's get this split wound back on this part here if we can yeah you can see he nibbled on a couple more of these but he didn't Twisting these. I don't know why. Every one of these harnesses on this thing, they've got a twist in them. The guy that wired it needs to be kicked in the balls. I don't think this is going to solve my issue with my power, but you never know. Maybe it's not getting this. It says this wire says ground on it, so maybe it's not getting the ground and that power source is not working. Because there's no ground. Come on, just my bitch. I'll rip my damn wire off I fixed. Trying to get this shit back on here. Okay, jeez. And this is gonna be put on to just get this one plugged in, see what it's gonna do. ground so a little bit of exposed wire I'm not too worried about because it's a ground he just kind of he just kind of went all over the place and chewed on it a little bit here and chewed on a little bit there. It's like, shit, man. Usually it's isolated at one area that they chewed on and that's it. But no, he just kind of, well, this don't taste too good here. I'm going to go over here and try this one. Okay, I'm going to leave the jumper wire that I've been hooking on to the power wire off. I don't, I still don't think that's going to solve our issue with that, but I haven't put the ignition in there for a reason yet. Nope, that did not solve our issue with that. Well, that sucks. Yep, and we're not going to be able to fix that problem until we, we have no keypad power until we get battery power on that wire. And I have no idea. no wiring harness so I don't know where it's supposed to go it's going down into this loom I bet it's going back here somewhere well shit you know shit I was hoping that fixed that problem but nothing can ever be easy okay so <laughs> I'm tracing the harness out with that red wire and I get back here and I'm thinking shit it's going up here so I got up here and opened this hatch here and uh, pretty certain I found the problem somebody has got all the wires unplugged back here to 
the control module. Hmm. That might make some kind of difference there. You think? Is it gonna stay in there or what? It's not really latching. They don't have center bolts in them. That one, that one, no, that still isn't. How do you get these things to latch? What the fuck, huh? Well, let's just right now, let's go see if we turn the key on without the hot wire and see if everything comes on the way it's supposed to. It's got to make something look a little better, huh? No, they're still not lit up. That's, I find that almost unbelievable. I really do. Hang on. My fucking phone's going off again. So I got that fixed. Now I can't get the PTO to kick on. <sighs> Son of a bitch, man. Yeah, I got the power wire to that fix, see? But I got no PTO, it won't kick on. Let's see here. Let's turn this off. Man, it's just one damn thing after another. And I found the PTO wires are going down here. Oh yeah, that's some good looking shit right there, buddy. Isn't that some nice looking shit going on there? Yeah, that's really nice looking. That's some stiller, stiller looking shit right there. What a fucking wreck, huh? Well, they're still together, but what a fucking mess. And those are going up to that. Is there anything else that's broke into or dicked up? God, what a piece of shit, huh? Wiring just totally shit on this thing. Total shit. goes up into this harness right here and it runs off the same switch that switches the throttle signal so what the hell you know I still got nothing things I gotta go do I can't stick around I've got I've got the an alligator my alligator wire on the PTO they're just I told them I said all they gotta do is get this loaded this is the last field they get it loaded they're gonna have to road it back and forth because they don't have a squeeze at each end to unload the truck when they get to the other end but I mean I just out of time of tracing that down I gotta get going and I told them I said get get done what you need to get done You'll have to come over here and take the wire off. But anyway. I guess it's charging, huh?
seems like it, either that or them batteries are weak. Crews ain't working on it either. That was working when I put the ECM in it. So they probably chewed that in somewhere or two also. Who knows? It's got a one-wire Delco on it. Yeah, that's just a plain old one-wire Delco. That's why you gotta excite it and I sat there and let that thing idle for a long time and but I gotta go I gotta go get some other shit done. I can't fuck around here anymore. Frickin' pack rats, man. Okay, make sure I got all my crap. Get the hell out of here, I guess. So.